Hey everyone, Jeff here. Welcome to episode six of the Modern Kitchen Renovation Series. If you missed the previous episodes, be sure to check them out. Uh, we went through the process of modeling the existing kitchen based on scans. Uh, we sketched out and started working through our design. And today we're actually gonna talk about laying out and, 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 and sort of test fitting our sketches within the Revit model in real world scale. Um, using some interesting techniques. If you watched the previous episode, you'll know I talked a lot about the fact that I like to go between Revit and sketching um, for the main reason of being a little more free flow in sketching and then a little more restrictive and scaled in Revit. And so there's this nice sort of dichotomy between the the free flow nature and non-scaled, uh, a non-work plane based uh, process of sketching um, and then the real world application of Revit where it's to scale and work plane based and so on. And so what I want to talk about today is actually we're going to be building a family today. And I thought I'd take a minute to build this family and show you how I created it because I do think it's an important part of the process that may frustrate a lot of uh, architects or designers um, when it comes to using Revit. And what that is, is the process of sort of placing cabinets. And so anyone who has used Revit and, and laid out a kitchen or maybe a bathroom or something and used cabinet families, you'll know that they're kind of restrictive in the sense that you have to place individual components. You have to size them. So you have to know it's a 36 inch. And if it's a seven foot wall, you kind of got to place them that way. You got to place all the little pieces. You got to place the countertop. You got to place the 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 wall uh, cabinets. And it becomes this sort of unitized, blocky, um, and almost restrictive feeling process, which is great when you're making construction documents and when you're actually um, trying to sort of finalize and make your design real, but it can be extremely frustrating when all you're trying to do is sort of test out some sketched ideas. So today I'm going to show you how to create a family that is basically uh, a two click solution to placing cabinets in your projects in order to test fit your project without being restricted by multiple pieces and all the different family libraries and so on and so forth. With all that being said, I did want to thank our sponsor for this series, which is RevitFamily.biz. When you get to the point to, of placing actual cabinets in your project, um, there is no better place for residential cabinet family models than RevitFamily.biz, created by Brenton Weiberg, who is a guest on the show and a friend of the BIM After Dark Live show. He's been nice enough to not only sponsor this series, but also offer you 20% off any family bundle on his website by using the code 2022RevitKid and clicking the link here or, or above here on the description. So let's run the clip and then we'll jump right into creating our generic model cabinet family. <music> So now let's jump into Revit and we're going to build this family. Hopefully you get an idea of why I think this family is so important. And then I also wanted to just show you the process of building it. Obviously, once you build this family once, you don't have to build it again. And so I know it looks like a lot in, as far as building this, but it's a great lesson in family creation. But then also once you do it, you get to use it for any of your designs moving forward. So with that, let's jump right into Revit and let's do this. So I'm going to create a new family. So file new family. And I'm going to start with a generic model line based family template. OK, so we're going to do a line based family. And so anyone who has not done this before, um, you will see at the end what this does is it allows you to click and place this family just like it's a wall almost. Right. You click one spot, click another spot and you're good to go. OK, so with line based families, what you have to know is that everything is based off of that line and it's going to stretch from that line. So what I'm doing here is I'm placing my reference planes. Anyone who has seen any of my family creation videos knows that the first thing I always do is place reference planes and then I add all the parameters and dimensions, stretch and flex those reference planes and then build the geometry. So here I'm just building my reference planes that have to do with the depth of the cabinet, the overhang of the curb or the the kick, I guess, depending on what you want to call it, and then the overhang of the of the um, the countertop above. So you'll see I have two feet of as far as the depth, and then one inch uh, for the cabinet, and then two inches for the kick or curb. And you'll notice what I did there is I actually pressed U N on my keyboard, and I changed the project units to just uncheck where it says or check where it says suppress zero, so you don't have a zero feet, so you don't have zero foot two inches. It just makes it easier. 
So now I'm selecting my um, two foot dimension and adding a parameter by hitting the little plus uh, add parameter on the top. And I called it the depth. And then I'm going to call this one the curb depth. So that's the curb underneath, you know, a little four inch step underneath most cabinets. Obviously, your cabinets may be a little different, but I'm just sort of going on with the, the basic um, the basic cabinets. And you'll see what I did here is I actually changed the, the depth to be the total um, of of the of the the cabinet. And that's just for my mindset of how I would actually be placing it. You always want to think when you're adding parameters and building parameters, how is the user in the project environment going to interact with these parameters? And then you can see this is the counter countertop overlap. And then I'll probably end up changing the depth to uh, two foot, uh, two foot one or something like that. But um, there we go, two foot one. So now, because to me, when I'm adding the depth, um, for, for whatever reason, I was thinking it's going to be the overall. doesn't really matter, but you get the idea here. <clears throat> now I'm going to add a parameter that that um, helps me with the counter uh, countertop overlap on either side. So what you'll see with this family is I'm actually going to build it to be uh, with the ability to have a right side, a left side overlap, as well as both sides and the back for the sake of, of an island, for example. Um, when it comes to test fitting, you probably don't even need to do all of this. You could probably just do the just the extrusion of the family and not have these little ends. Um, I just liked it for myself um, to, to have the, that ability. Uh, plus, I think it's a good learning lesson for visibility parameters. So you you can see what I'm doing here is I'm copying for the two inches of the curb and then the uh, one inch overhang of the of the countertop. So again, I'm, I'm trying to I'm making this family so it can be an island um, or a peninsula as well as just a wall based cabinet. For the sake of sketching and being able to go quickly, that probably doesn't make a big difference for most of you, but um, just wanted to go through the process of you know making it a little more complicated because why not? Um, so here we go. I'm just assigning that now to the uh, parameters that already existed for curb depth and counter overlap. So those will flex the same as the other ones um, as we as we adjust our family. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the right hand side. And you'll notice everything is being based off of the reference planes that already existed. Right. There's a left one, a right one. There's the line. And then I'm, I'm, I'm hosting or I'm, I'm attaching everything to that uh, left and right hand. Um, parameter so that now when you stretch the line, which is your placement point, um, everything's going to move with it. So same thing on the right hand side. Add my curb depth add my cabinet overlap of one inch. So right now all I have is those those three parameters, but I'm assigning them to all different locations. So when I change that parameter once, it's going to change the overlap around the entire thing. Always uh, test and flex your parameters. And that's what I'm doing there is I'm testing and flexing them by moving the, the length. And now I'm in my elevation view. So now I'm going to set up some of my parameters to set the heights, um, the height of the cabinet, the height of the curb, the height of the the countertop. And then I, I do put some wall cabinets um, as well. And then the adjustments of those. So basically, if you think about um, just looking at a typical kitchen wall, I'm making it so that you can flex a whole group of cabinets at one time. Usually what you'll see here is that I like to place my reference planes. I'll add my dimensions and then I can make them square after the fact. Um, you know, sometimes just placing dimensions at exact locate or placing ref planes at exact locations can be a little bit of a pain. So here's the top of the wall cabinets at seven feet. And then I'll come down whatever distance makes sense. And then all that's going to be adjustable anyways. So now here's an interesting dilemma where um, I could make the overall height my parameter or I could make the height uh, between the counter, the cabinet, uh, the countertop and the wall cabinet, the parameter, you know, depending on how you build your your kitchens and how you think um, is kind of um, how you might want to might want to set your family up. For me, I, I believe I, I usually will go um, top of wall cabinet and then come down the distance and then the space between is the space between. And I think that's how I set this one up. Now I'm just setting parameters for the, the curb height, I'm creating a parameter for the um, the counter height, the countertop thickness, and then I'll do the wall cabinet heights as well as the wall cabinet um, total height. So I call this one overall height and then wall cabinet height, I believe I call the other one wall cabinet height down. Maybe not the best naming convention, but to me, that's something that made sense in the project environment. <laughs> and that's obviously what uh, what I did here. And that's what you should do, too. So again, think think about the project users, right? Think about the the users in the project environment and what makes sense to them. Sometimes spelling it out is the best way to make sense. So now here I'm adding a reference plane for the wall, the wall ca uh, cabinet depth. Um, in, in, a, in a reference there. Um, obviously, wall cabinet depth is usually a little shallower and different than the, the height. I mean, obviously, you could push and pull the parameter now. But now I'm giving myself the ability to flex all of this stuff. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually closing, I was closing out some views, I typed WT 
um, on my on my uh, keyboard or TW, uh, depending on, on how you have your keyboard shortcut set up. And um, I'm setting up multiple views so that I can, when I'm drawing my geometry, I can see my floor plan, my elevation, and my 3D views all at the same time. Um, and so this is really nice when you're flexing dimensions, but also when you are um, drawing geometry. So you can sort of mess around with all the different views. And so now I have my 3D view, my floor plan view, my elevation front, my elevation side. And I'm going to actually draw my draw my geometry. Normally, uh, when I, if I was if I was teaching this instead of recording it live as I was going, um, I would really test and flex all of these parameters first. I would move all the dimensions. I had a lot of faith in my dimensions working here, so I didn't even bother. But it's not the best practice to not do that. Um, so now I'm just I drew my my extrusion shape in my uh, left elevation. And I'm just going through using a line. So AL on my keyboard. So type AL, select your reference plane, then select the magenta line and lock it. Okay, so I'm going through and I'm clicking all of these magenta lines and locking them to their respective reference planes, right? Which we already drew in, we already selected to everything. And so now you can see that shape of the cabinet being extruded. And then if you select one of the pink lines, you'll notice it actually highlights and shows you what you've what you've um, locked. So that's a quick way to check. And then obviously after this, you could flex and check as well, and that'll help you more. Um, I'm just expanding this now and making sure that the front and the back are locked. Um, you didn't necessarily have to lock the back if you knew that your reference plane, or the, in this case, the starting point, um, the work plane was locked there, but uh, I was just making sure. So now we've got our piece of geometry. I'm adding a material parameter. If you don't add material parameters to your families, you most certainly should. Um, and uh, I'm of the of the nature of um, usually just making sure that you at least have the parameter. You don't have to create the material in the family. You can just give them the ability to do it in the project. But here you can see I'm actually creating a brand new material as well. And I'm going to call this something like generic cabinets or something along those lines and making it probably white. Um, and then this way you have two options. You could modify the material uh, when it's brought into your project or you could apply the uh, a material using the parameter. Part of the reason you don't want to apply a material in the family environment is that the, if the same name material exists in your project, so let's use glass, for example, maybe you make a, a really dark gray glass in your family, but the word glass and the material glass exist in your project. When you load your family in, it's actually going to use the project's glass settings, not the family. So that's why it's not always a good idea to, uh, to apply a material in the family. It's better to give them the ability to apply a material. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a few more extrusions that are going to make my end panels, um, which is really the ability to make it a peninsula or an island. And so again, this part, not necessarily uh, required, I don't think, um, for the sake of and nature of being able to sort of sketch your cabinets in. Um, but uh, I just like to give myself a little more flexibility um, and being able to sort of see the island as is. I also wasn't sure at the time if I was going to be creating um, anything for presentation to the client um, at this point in time. And if, if I wanted to present this to the client, I may have wanted a little more detail to the cabinet. So uh, in this case, you could see what I'm doing is I'm I'm adding um, some geometry that I'm going to be able to turn on and off using visibility parameters um, to turn on the left side or right side. And you can see here's the overhang of the cabinet itself. And I'm just aligning and locking that sketch to all of the reference planes that we had set up. Again, AL on the keyboard, type AL, type the, uh, click the reference plane, click your magenta sketch, and then lock it. That's one of the, one of the best ways to lock things uh, when there's a lot of overlapping um, geometry so that you can really see what, what is and is not locked. And you see what I'm doing there just to double check is I'm clicking one of the pink lines and then it's usually gonna highlight all of the sketch and let you know where locks are open or closed, you know, where constraints are open and closed. Now, see how easy it is to jump between elevation 3D and, and floor plan when you have these three or four views. Um, super helpful and super valuable tip for you guys is to use that, that tile windows command, which is TW and WT to open and close tile windows. Looks like I realized I should have just done a rectangular sketch there. Always fun to, to, to watch the sausage being made. And then just double checking that the constraints are set for the top and bottom. And again, you can use the align tool or you can push and pull the geometry away from the reference plane and pull it back. Um, and so here I'm just using align so I can tab through and know that I'm actually selecting the right thing. And of course, now I can apply the same material parameter.
So what I'm doing here is I'm actually copying and pasting the geometry over there. Not always the best, um, the best suggestion um, when it comes to family creation is mirroring or copying and pasting. But in this case, I'm realigning and locking it all, and it's all just rectangles, um, including you know even the work plane that it's off of. So it's an instance where it just saved me time to copy and paste and unconstrain it from its from its um, from its location. As long as you go back and you make sure that all of the geometry is locked, relocked, and 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 set to the right reference planes. There you could just create your own geometry again. Now here what I'm doing is I'm actually selecting this and I'm creating a visibility parameter. So when you select your geometry, there's a little dot, uh, dot, dot, dot there called uh, visibility, a uh, little ellipse. And I'm applying that and I'm saying left panel on and off and right panel on and off. And I'm making it an instance parameter. So now when I'm in the project and I place this, I can quickly turn on this panel or that panel on or off. If I turn them both on, it looks kind of like a, an island. So now here what I'm doing is I'm actually adding reference planes to the back for the um, for the counter overlap and then I believe the curb or something of that nature. Um, and this again is for the sake of if I wanted to see it like an island. Again, probably not important and probably too much detail for this type of family. Um, but I think it's a good, just a good exercise um, as well as a, a way to just sort of show some different things you can do with it. So I'm just adding a, a counter overlap or override or whatever you want to call it. Um, counter overlap, I called it, um, as well as the curb thickness. And I'm going to just model in those the the curb family to uh, to make it so I can actually turn on and off the the rear panel as well. So as I click from left to right, um, you'll notice when I let go, all of the locks come up. And so that's one way to do it when you have a rectangle. Um, the only downfall with this is you're not 100% sure what Revit is assuming the constraint is for. Um, so you may want to do it. Um, uh, uh, actually aligning and locking like I did all the other ways. So you can see now I'm just going to push and pull that um, and lock it in both directions so that now this little chunk of of casework is um, is locked just like it needed to be. And I'm going to do a little overlap here, which is basically uh, we're going to call it an, a, a rear panel of some sort. Again, using the rectangle tip, it lets you sort of lock everything. If you're doing a more complex family, I would definitely suggest you don't do the rectangle um, and you uh, you actually just use the align and lock tool like I was doing before. Here I locked it to the wrong one. So let's just pull it, remove constraints, <laughs> and then lock it to the right reference plane, which is going to get mad at me because it's pulling from the other side. There we go. Now I got to lock this guy over here, but I have to remove it. So one way to remove it is to just pull it away from the reference plane and let, let Revit yell at you and say, fine, remove constraints. And then you can see there I'm locking in. So as long as you're paying attention to where you're at and what you're locking and, and where you are in the model, you know, some of these things you can get away with. Now I'm just going to align this to a, um, a visibility parameter that I'm going to call. I'm going to call it island on off. <laughs> so that's really just the rear. And so you can see now we have a family that we can place. Okay, so what you'll see here is um, I actually just joined all the geometry and then I'm drawing the wall cabinets. So we'll get back to the join geometry thing uh, in a second. But first, I'm just drawing the wall cabinets um, and a simple, simple rectangle. Um, I can I'll adjust the the depth of them, um, the location of them. Make sure I make sure I um, I adjust the uh, the the depth and the height correctly. So I'm locking it to this line, locking it to that line, and then these I'm going to give the same material, and then of course I'm going to give them a visibility parameter, right? Because I'm going to want to make sure that um, I can turn the wall cabinets on and off as well. So I'm going to give them the same generic cabinet material. And then I'm going to uh, give them a visibility parameter. I'm going to call them wall cabinets on off, something like that. So now I have the ability to turn on the left side, the right side, the rear side to turn it into an island or two peninsulas. And then I also have the ability to turn on the wall cabinet. So all this can happen with just click, click. So not thinking about all these little components and pieces. So now you'll notice what I'm doing here is I'm turning on the preview visibility, which is a family uh, tool and I'm checking my my visibility on and off and so this is this is where I can see hey what happens when I turn off my my wall cabinets and so on <clears throat> and it's going to look like it does in the project environment so what you'll notice is I turned on uh, I turned off island and it's not turning off okay so upper cabinets turning off but all my panels are not turning off so remember I said I joined all the geometry and we'll get back to that well we're back to it. <laughs> uh, so once you join the geometry, it does a little fun, fun stuff with the visibility 
So what I ended up doing is just unjoining everything. Um, the, the annoying piece of it is that obviously you see the line work, but what's nice about it is um, um, you, have, you have the ability to turn these things off. And so you'll notice that's kind of what I'm playing with here. I'm playing with the idea that, oh no, when I have geometry joined, it's messing with all my visibility parameters. So what I end up doing is uh, messing with a few different things, uh, trying the materials, trying unjoining, and then realizing that um, unjoining the geometry is going to be the best solution. Uh, most of this I'm testing out in Enscape as a rendered view, so I'm not seeing the line work anyways. And plus it's just for sketching, so I don't really care at this point in time. But now you'll notice I had to actually reassign all the visibility parameters to these pieces <clears throat> because they were joined to another piece and then the visibility parameter was, was in, input by that piece. So um, lesson learned there um, is, is you know, to, if you're controlling visibility, um, you may not want to, uh, you may not want to uh, join all the geometry uh, to a specific uh, extent there. Now let's load into the project and you'll see, watch this. So I'm just clicking from left to right <clears throat> and it's placing the cabinet family. And now I can adjust the width of it. I can adjust the visibility of it, right? I can turn off the end panels. I can turn off the wall panels. And now I have the ability to just fill in this space and quote unquote, sketch in my cabinets without the restrictions of finding what sizes do I need. So I need 236 inches, 436 inches, um, you know, all of the component pieces, put a cabinet in, put a wall cabinet in, put a base cabinet in, you know, put all this stuff in. Now I can actually just sketch this, these spaces out um, just like I would, um, you know, with, with my pen and paper. And now I can test this thing to scale. And so now I can just click, click, two clicks, adjust the height, adjust the, the visibility of them all and move through. So that's our generic cabinet family. And you can see by placing it this way, I have the ability to free flow and just place cabinets in, turn wall cabinets on and off, test some things out. And, and then I can use that in tandem with my sketching to sort of test those ideas really, really quickly, right? The idea is to not make it restrictive uh, to, to test out your designs. And so in the next episode, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to lay out a our two design options. We're gonna jump into Enscape, look at some 3D views, and we're gonna kind of test out what options we like using this cabinet family. So stay tuned for episode seven. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the channel here. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this series and I'll see you soon.